in mates the time has come we've got the whole denali range right here in front of us now first of all there's gonna be a lot of people coming to this video right now thinking why on earth is he calling us inmates? So just to quickly explain that and avoid all the questions in the comments down below, inmates is a play on words, a life behind bars, not these bars, but these bars, okay? So the whole inmate thing is a play on the whole prison being in a cell, okay? There we go, get that one out of the way. So about 18 months ago, I brought a video to you showing all of the range of Denali pods, all six of them at the time. We now have eight. So it's about time we did an updated version. Today is Tuesday the 11th of January, at the weekend I was out there in the fields with all of these lights doing a daytime test and a nighttime test. Now I'm going to be showing you bits through this video as I'm actually talking about the, each pod as I go through them but if you watch until the very end I will show you a full version of the daytime and the nighttime test so you can watch it exactly as it was happening. I was trying to think should I make this video nice and short and quick for you to see what you want to see and I thought, well, do you know what? They're an expensive purchase and we need to kind of like take the time and see exactly what we want to put on our bike. We're gonna let the lights do, do the talking and I'll put the data on the screen for you to read as we go through the video. If it's not on the screen long enough or you know what to do, just hit that pause button and take note, okay? Now, before we dive in, starting at this end, I just want to say, I still get a lot of people contacting me saying they've just bought their Denali equipment and they have no idea that I actually stock and sell Denali. So just a very quick reminder, I thought it was pretty obvious, but I am a Denali retailer, stockist. I have big infantry here, here in the UK. I ship worldwide. The website is supposed to intuitively know what country you are in. But just to confirm everything, the whole thing with Brexit and tax and sales tax and all that sort of thing, is if you add something to the shopping basket, on that same page, you'll see delivery country. If you select your delivery country, you will then get accurate pricing on the website. As soon as you get to checkout and you add your items to the checkout, if you see VAT and there's a number there, well, it's probably because you're in the UK. If you see VAT and it says zero, well, it's probably because it has got the correct IP address. But if you select your country, you can't get past that stage with the wrong information. So if you are buying something and it's going to and the, the address that you live at, well then you will be charged VAT either accordingly or not accordingly, whether that's zero or 20% tax. Now I'm going to put links down below to each light pod and you'll see the prices for each light pod on the website. However, if you want to get clever about this, then you need to navigate to the website and select your bike. If you can't see your bike, then that's okay. You'll see there I have an a bike thing bundle section. So when we put the lights together with the easy can, with the respective bike mount, with a sound bomb horn, with a rear light, all these extra bits and pieces, well then if we put them all in a bundle together, the website will discount them for you. So it's a really good thing if you try and use the filter on the website. If you're on a mobile phone, you'll get a filter button at the top, press that and you'll see all the different filters that you can go through so you can narrow down your search. If you select a bike thing bundles and then select your bike, well then you are gonna see bundles on there which are perfect for you. So let's say for instance, you want a D7 bundle. Well, you click on the D7 bundle, you'll see there's like a default setting. If you read the description, it says what the default setting is, where you get an easy can, you get the two D7 pods, you get the mount for it. But if you want to, you can change the mount. So take this bike here, for example, this is an R1250 GS, non-adventure. He's got upper crash bars by Tora Tech. This bike is actually gonna be worked on tomorrow. He's having a lot of work done to it, but we can't actually fit the light mount bar that we do for this bike because of the Toratech bar gets in the way. So on the website, you'll be able to go on there and select crash bar mounts instead of the, the light bar mount that we do for the GS. So you can configure your bundle specifically for your bike. So you can figure out how you want, add it to the basket and you'll see what the total price is. Right, now that's out of the way, my little sales pitch, let's start talking about these lights. So we're gonna start off with the DM. It's the smallest light pod in the range that the Gnarly do. As you'll see from the videos I've done, I've done a daytime test so you can see how well you can be seen with these. Now, during the test, 
I only used the default lens that's inside the actual light pod itself, which is the clear lens. Now in the box, you will get a mottled lens, which is basically your fog light lens, so you can change it. So if you want to be using these, so you're gonna be seen more during the day, well then you need to change that clear lens and put the mottled lens in so you're seen more. So by putting the mottled lens in, it spreads the light right in front of the bike. It helps you be seen from more angles. Whereas when you've got a clear lens, it's a very narrow beam of light going down the road. For the test purposes, I didn't fit the model lens to it. It was taking too much time to do all the different types of light pods and changing all the lenses. But I will, at a later date, be bringing a video based on selective yellow and amber lenses so you can see the difference between those colors on various pods mainly, well, well, all of them really, apart from the, the S4s. Right, so that is a DM light, nice and small, can fit that anywhere. You'll see that I fitted this to my KTM 1290 Super Adventure S and I'm using them as turn signals. So they are a DRL, I've got them set up in the software as a DRL light running at around about 20, 30% brightness. And instead of requesting the software to turn them off when I indicate left and right, I have got them set up where they actually flash. So I've changed it from off to flash, so when I indicate they actually flash in sync with the bike's indicators. Pretty neat. So that's the DM. The next one up from that is the D2. So if I put these side by side, you can see the, diff the size difference of these. Okay. So with the D2, very similar to the DM. Basically everything I've just said about the DM is the D2, but it's a little bit more powerful. You've got the fog lens in the box, which you can fit to it as well, if you wish to do so. I've had this on my GS Adventure in the past, where I fitted selective yellow lenses to, to it using the fog lens, so it's very, very bright to be seen. So if you're gonna use these as an indicator for, for daytime use, well then you need to change that lens ideally to the fog lens that comes with the light. But if you're gonna go for the selective yellow or the amber, well then you need to purchase that separately. But if you can use it as an indicator, then my advice is, my personal advice is, would be use the fog selective yellow or the fog amber lens so your indicator is seen more by other road users. Really, really good light. I used to have that side by side. I will show you some images of that. I had it side by side on my GSA when I first got it, my triple black, quad black if you like, where I had four D2s all running along the bottom. I had some clear ones and I had some selective yellow ones. And I had them configured in the software whereby during the daytime, I had the clear ones completely switched off. So the, the bike knew to, to make sure they're switched off. As soon as I turned the ignition on during the daytime, the clear ones would be completely off but the selective yellow ones would come on because it knew it was daytime and it would come on with the DRL of the bike, the daytime running light. As soon as it got dark, the yellow ones would go off because I wouldn't need them anymore. And the, the clear ones would come on, which would give me more road visibility when driving at night. And when I hit full beam, the clear one went to 100%. But I only have the selective yellow ones coming on for daytime use only. Then we're moving up to the D3 fog pod. This is an interesting one in the, in the test we did out in the farmer's field because uh, obviously we, we did a test during daytime and we did a test in pitch black. When you look at it into the lens and the lights come on, it's very impressive and, it, and it's just like a lot of thought has gone into that lens of how it illuminates. And actually what I'm going to do right now is open up because I want to see exactly how many LEDs are behind this. So let me just get my tools. So this is what you'd have to do if you were changing your lens anyway to a colored lens. And the whole thing with fog pods is that they help you be seen. It's not about you necessarily seeing, but maybe Denali have, ha have got some tech in this where it actually helps you see further as well. I'm not too sure, but the whole idea with the fog pod is that it helps you be seen by other road users. Whereas the driving D3 spot, which we'll get onto in a minute, that is um, that will project right down the road. Right, so this is interesting. They call it a D3, but it's actually got four LEDs inside it. So, and that is what I suspected when I when you look at the lens, you can see you've got four optics on the front of the lens. 
And sure enough, when you look inside there, you've got the PCB, printed circuit board, with four LEDs on there. Even when you were gonna be putting selective yellow or amber lenses on here, you literally just take this off, push that lens out, and then pop that back on again. And the seal on this one is actually fitted inside here, which is that straight away, I love the quality of this in comparison to some of the other lights over the past, the way how the seal is, how it's fitted inside the actual light pod unit itself, rather than being on the lens. So well done Denali for that, I'm well impressed. Okay, put that back together again. Okay, now moving on to the S4. Now, if you've watched the last video I did 18 months ago on the S4, I still have the exact same opinion of this. It is bloody bright. So it's not as bright as the D4, but it seems brighter. So this is a perfect option for daytime riders. So you wanna be seen, this will do the job. The downside to this light pod is there are no colored lenses that you can put on there. So if you want to have that selective yellow, that amber light on the front of your S4, so you can, you can be a different color coming down the road because it's supposed to like the selective yellow is supposed to be brighter as you're coming down the road. I know it works with the D2s with the yellow lens on there. They are perfect for daytime use to help you be seen. But the S4 is just a very super bright white light. So it'd be interesting to see the video footage, because although I've recorded all the video footage down in the fields, I haven't actually gone back through and watched them yet. So <laughs> I'll be watching that when I edit all this content. But fantastic light pod. I think it's a no brainer to go for this. I get people asking me all the time, which lights do you recommend? You know, what do I advise on? So my question to you as my customer is, well, do you do more daytime riding or do you do more nighttime riding? If you know you are definitely a daytime rider, well, this is perfect for you. If you don't like a square, well then you should be looking at the D2, putting a mottled, a mottled lens on there, a fog lens or a colored lens on there for daytime riding. But if you're riding at night a lot, well then maybe forget about this one. You could have it as a secondary light for daytime use, but then you need to be looking at some of the other lights, which I'm gonna show you shortly. Or if you find you are doing both nighttime and daytime riding, well then you need to be looking at the D4, which is basically this, but bigger, but we can play around with the lenses as well. Now I've previously said about the S4s that they must be standing up. Now I have been riding with these on my on previous bikes, not my current R1250 GSA, but my 2018 R1200 GSA, I did go for quite a stint where I had S4s on the bike. I had them sat this way, I had them sat that way. I couldn't see any difference in the light beam pattern at all. I think the, the distance of the optics where you've got the mottled ones on the bottom and the clear ones on the top, they're so close together, the actual results are negligible. I really wouldn't worry it. If you want to mount it like that, like that, like that, it really does not matter with the S4. The DR1, I'm gonna leave that to one side for now because I want to follow on with the D4 after the S4. So it's basically a bigger version, but with this one, we can take the lens out. Now the default setting for this is you get the clear lenses at the top, if you are sitting it, clear lenses at the top and the mottled lenses at the bottom. If you're gonna hang in this light, you would, you would do that and then you would take the lens off and turn it 180 degrees so you've got the mottled at the bottom, the clear at the top. And obviously we can also take this lens off and we can put selective yellow in there or amber. It's pretty cool. This is still the all time favorite seller across the last two, two and a half years I've been selling Denali light pods. So, you can't go wrong with this. You're gonna get a, the best of both. I order more of these in than any other light pod. I still believe the D3 isn't going to outsell this. Maybe it will, time will tell, but let's wait and see, but you cannot go wrong with the D4. Okay, so going back to the DR1. Now the DR1, it's, I think it's a choice for a connoisseur. Now I've had this on a previous bike back on my R1200 GSA. I had this fitted before the D7s were launched. I had them turned off all the time as running lights. I didn't even use them as running lights. So you'll find when you look at the, the shoot that I did in the daytime and, in, and, and at the nighttime out in the fields, that at 20%, you can't even see it. It's, it's, it's kind of a pointless light. But in my opinion, 
Uh, and don't forget, I've got the spot lens on here as well. But in the box, you get a hybrid lens in there. So where you still get the spot in the middle, but the edges have got the mottled fog lens, which catches the eyes of other road users. So it is an option to have it, but I think Denali have other ranges here which is better for daytime visibility than going for the DR1. However, when I had this on my R1200 GSA, I had a lot of fun with this, and, and, but this was before the D7 came out. But I had a lot of fun with this because for me, it was like riding a lighthouse. So if you think of a lighthouse when you see it in the movies or when you see it when you're, when you're actually down <laughs> by the coast and you can see a lighthouse in operation, you literally see that beam of light scanning the ocean. You see it going for miles, like a pencil beam going right across the ocean. This is what you get with this. So if you've got it slightly off, if you haven't got them set up absolutely perfect on your bike, you can look like you're cockeyed. You've got one, one going that way and one going down that way. You'll see in the video recording I did in the fields at night time, I'm taking quite a bit of time to try and get this level. So I've got perfect level beams. And once you've got it right, and you're out there on the country lanes, up and down the hills, around the bends, you will see this beam of light literally tracking around the bend. It's, it's a pretty cool light. And it does go a long way. Uh, so that's the other thing, you, you, you really notice how far it goes. So if you had a, a DR1 side by side with a D7, you're actually there on your bike, you will actually feel like it goes further. It's not, I think the D7 does outpower it by a long way, but it just feels like it goes a lot further because all of the sides are still very dark. It's literally just making a channel right through that, cutting right through the road and you see the spotlight at the very end of the road. Very cool light, and I still do sell them every now and then, and I have them here in stock all the time. Now we're on to this, the D3 Spot, which I have had a lot already come through my hands. The back orders exceeded the stock that came in, and we've still got them in back order now, as of January the 11th, 2022. There's a lot to be said about this. If you've seen the video before this one, where I actually fitted it to an R1250 GS Rally, you'll see that it's a nice white, bright, very crisp light. The stats show that this should outpower everything here. But when you watch the video, you will actually discover that I think this is on par with the D4. Now, which is interesting, and Denali probably can't stand me saying this, I'm sure they're okay with it, but, uh, but I'm, I'm giving you real evidence here. So what's interesting about this is that the D the D4 and the, and the D3 driving spot are more or less the same price, give or take a penny. I think that I think on my website they are the same price. A friend of mine said after I did the test, he said, well, if, if this is every bit as good as the D4, then people aren't gonna buy the D4, are they? Well, I completely disagree because I think the square, the square pod of the D4 is beautiful. So if you put these two side by side, so if I'll show you those there, it's a personal preference. I get people saying, well, I can't have a square pod and a circular pod in the front of my bike. For me personally, I, I don't care. I think it looks great if you've got a square pod and a circular pod. But there are some people who have got some serious, OC I wouldn't say serious OCDs, but we do have our own little OCDs. And if we've got a circular pod and we want to put another pod on there, well, it's, it's also got to be circular. Whereas if we go for square, we find a lot of people want to put the square on there and then put another square on there. So you've got two squares on there. It's completely your choice. So. Going back to the D3, obviously it's got three LEDs inside this one. It hasn't got the four like the D3 fog pod, which I've literally just found out at the same time as you. But you'll notice that the, the actual LEDs are somewhat very different, or should I say the actual optic on the front is very different to what they've done on any of the other lights in the range. Now, it's important to know, I forgot to mention it when I picked up the fog pod, is that these lights are DOT approved. So they're all, They've all got e-certification, and over the last two, two and a half years of selling Denali pods to my customers globally, I've learned that there's a lot of countries that can't actually have these on their bikes because of road legalities. And I know Germany and Singapore are big problem areas, and also America, from what I understand, because we, we do sell a lot of the black slip-on covers for these lights because they're not allowed for the road. Whereas these, these are road legal, so Denali are going to be selling a lot of these lights because they are road legal in, I think, nearly every country in the world. Don't quote me on that. I, I have not done my homework on 
on all the countries, but I'll put all the, the figures on the screen so you can see the e-certified number for this and the DOT approval number for it and everything. It's a game changer for Denali. They're gonna sell so many of these because of that DOT approval and the e-certification that's been passed on these two light pods. And I think the two, look at that, they're both exactly the same size. The two of these on your bike, these for your fogs down below, these for your driving lights, I think is a pretty, pretty good option. Try and imagine that on here. You could put that up there and this one down low. I think it's a really beautiful combo for your bike. Sorry, I nearly forgot. The default lens that comes on this light pod when you take it out of the box is the spot lens. So every single lens is clear. The other lens they do in the pack is the hybrid lens. So with the hybrid lens, it's going to give you clear, if the, if, that's if the pod is sitting upright, it's gonna give you clear at the bottom and a fog at the top. I've already had quite a few questions on the last video about can we sit these or hang these? This is where it gets really confusing. So I've been speaking to the distributor here in the UK who have been speaking directly to Denali, asking the questions about the orientation of the pod, whether we can sit it or hang it. And what they've come back with is that it has to be sat. However, if you're using the spot lens, I'm telling you now, you can hang this. You don't have to have it sitting because with the GSA, and the GS with, with the light mount we do, I appreciate a lot of us want to be able to hang it on the actual bike like this. So if you're using the spot lens, well then you can definitely do that. If you're using the hybrid lens, which is gonna be great for daytime and nighttime use, if we do that, well then obviously that's upside down, which I'm thinking through in my head now, well, that's what we've been doing with the the D4, because when you look at the D4 pod, when it's sat upright, we've got the fog spots at the bottom and the spotlights at the top. And when you actually turn the D3 pod around, well, that's what we're getting again. We're getting that bottom, that bottom D3 spot as a fog light at the bottom, and we're getting the top two, which is the spot, but partially, they've got a partial bit of fog mottling going on in that lens as well. So I'm being told that if you put that on there like that, it's got to be, it's got to be sitting. But I, I can't see any harm in you hanging this light upside down. And then it's all about you getting the angle right when it's actually on the mount. You can line up the beam appropriately on your bike. Moving on to the D7. Now take a look at this. So this has been out now for about 18 months. So uh, could, could be could getting them for two years now. Still an absolute monster. I love this light a lot. And as you'll see from the video evidence from being in the fields, this completely, completely blows the D3 away. I was expecting this D3 to blow the D7 away. It doesn't, and you'll see it for yourself. An absolute powerful, powerful unit. Now, I've said in the past that with the D7, that I find if you're gonna be running at 10 or 20% as a DRL and then 100% for full beam, well then I'm finding you need to dip the light down towards the ground a bit because I personally found, and I've had some customers tell me, they're still being flashed by oncoming traffic. Although it's not on at 100%, just the way how the optic is designed, it's so powerful, it's so clean and so crisp, it really catches the eyes of other road users and you'll find that they, they think you're glaring them. I think it's, it's just so bright, I don't necessarily think it's burning their eyeballs out, but they are seeing something which is uh, very bright and they think you've got full beam on and you haven't and you find yourself flashing them just to tell them, actually, no, this is my full beam and then you really see them squint. <laughs> If you find that you want to use this as a DRL and you've got to dip it down a little bit, that's fine. But when you hit full beam, you'll, you'll notice that you're just shining up the road so bright. Whereas really you want that light coming up and shining right down the road when you've got full beam on. So for me personally, for D7s, I have them switched off for DRLs. They don't come on at all. And then when I'm actually riding at nighttime and I've got nothing in front of me and I want full beam, I want to see everything, I then have them coming to 100% when I hit full beam. That works perfectly for me because I've then got other lights on my bike for daytime running lights and dipped lights to help me see more of the road in front of me when there's other traffic on the road as well. And of course, you still get the selective yellow and the amber lenses for the D7 as well. So I think based on the price point for all of these lights, 
it's all very reflective, no pun intended. It's very reflective on the power you get from each light. So for those of you who are watching, who are big into your cameras, and you may have criticized one of the last videos I did where I had Denali versus Clearwater in my front garden, I have my camera in manual mode. And although it's a manual mode, for some reason, the exposure compensation was still messing around on the camera. You weren't actually seeing the true, the true effects. Although I was telling you what was happening and the D7s were, were the outright winner in that video, the actual camera was adjusting based on too much light coming into the, coming into the the aperture into the into the shutter whatever you want to call it i'm no photographer but i have spoken to a professional photographer who has helped me get my settings pretty perfect you'll notice in the video that i comment on it that what i am seeing with the naked eye i'm getting that with what i'm seeing through the lens of the camera so i'm really pleased about that and when the lights go to full beam that the exposure isn't adjusting because it suddenly got brighter. So I'm really, really pleased with that. So the settings I had to use to get it just right is I have my aperture, I wanted it at 5.6, but I had to put my ISO right up to like 3,000, 3,500, which obviously I didn't really want to do. So I brought my aperture right down to 2.8, which then put my shutter at one over 25 or 25 over one, one slash 25. And then the ISO was set to 500. If I brought the ISO down any lower, then it was getting, the actual image was darker than what I was seeing myself with my own eyes. So that was kind of the perfect setting. And then the exposure compensation was frozen. So it, it didn't move at all. The only thing I did forget to do, which I'm, I'm hoping you don't mind too much, is I forgot to lock the focus. So you will notice as I'm putting my hands in front of the camera to turn the trestle around that I've got the lights on, that was messing with the focus. But as soon as the lights come on, it kind of refocuses and get again. So you still get a really good idea of which light is performing the best. If you've got any questions, if you enjoyed the video, if it's helped you make a decision of what light pod you want on your bike or your car or your ATV or whatever you want to put it on, if it's helped you, please give me a like. Leave a comment down below. Love interacting with you guys. Really appreciate all the love. So you've got the DRL on the bike is on. I've got all other lights off on the bike. Okay, these are the DMs. It is nice and level. 20%. Full beam, 20% full beam. Okay, these are the D2s at 20%, full beam at 100%. Dipped at 20%, full beam. Okay, that's the S4s at 20% and S4s at full beam. S4s at 20%, full beam, 100%. And we've got D4s here at 20%. Now let's go to full beam. So it's definitely working. Full beam, dipped. So dipped at 20%, full beam at 100%. Okay, this is the DR1s at 20%, full beam, 20% full beam. These are the D3 driving spots at 20% dipped, full beam 100%. Dipped, 100% full beam. These are the D3 fog pods at 20%. Full beam at 100%, dipped at 20%, full beam, dipped. And finally, the D7s. D7s at 20%, full beam, 20%, full beam. Hopefully you can hear me, I'm just recording this on the iPhone. So we're back down here at night time again. Uh, that, so far, all we've got there is the headlight on the, the bike. I've got the Lone Rider guard down. Let me just turn it around. 
So I've taken the, the filter down so we've got just the OEM light doing its thing. So I'll turn on the main camera in a moment. So it's all going to be coming off this camera here and we'll be able to see it all the way down here. Now just to show you right now at the moment I haven't got any of the lights turned on here whatsoever but we're now going to work our way through all of the Denali lights. So right now I've got all the settings based on zero. Okay so now we're, we are recording through the main camera. So the image of my iPhone is not it's not actually true to form. It's a lot lighter than what I'm seeing, whereas the, the image, let me just turn that off now. Right, so I've got the, the aperture at 2.8, the shutter's at 1 over 25, and the ISO's on 500. And that is pretty much the same as what I'm seeing with, with the naked eye. So if I go to full beam, that is just the BMW light only. So what I'm going to do now is just turn on the DMs up to 20%. If I go to full beam now, you're going to get the BMW light and the DMs at 100%, which is that there. Double check, yeah. So that is 20% on the DM and 100% on the DM as well. That's pretty much about what I'm seeing with the naked eye. Okay. Let's now unplug the DMs. And plug in the D2s. The bike headlight and the D2s at 20%. Now that's 100%. Yep, that's exactly what I'm seeing. So what, what you are seeing here, I'm, I'm looking at my screen, that's exactly what I'm seeing here with the naked eye. So 100%, 20%, 100%, 20%. Okay, so now we're just back down to the standard BMW light. Right, so now we're gonna go on to the S4s. Okay, so that's the S4s at 20%, and then 100%, and we've got that. You can really see them getting significantly brighter as we go up through the range. So 100%, 20%, and that is the S4. Okay, unplugging that now. And now we're gonna go on to the D4. So they are the, that's the D4s at 20% brightness. Just make sure they're level. Yep. That's 20%. Let's go to 100%. We've got that. So 100%, 20%. And what you are seeing on the screen is identical to what I'm seeing here. No adjustments are being made by the camera whatsoever. Big thank you to Simon Thomas for helping me with my settings, mate. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's unplug the D4s. Starting with the DR1s. Now, can you see that, that spot? And now, I've mentioned in previous, previous videos when doing stuff with the DR1s, they are like a pinprick instead of like a lighthouse. So look at that, you can actually see it moving. Like having one of those torches. And let's put that to 100%. Now, I, you can't see it on camera, but you can actually see, you're actually seeing the beam, the thin narrow beam of light going down the road. But that's, that is really good but it doesn't give you that great big spread of light like you get with a D4. And this is the one that we've been waiting for. <laughs> this is the D3 spot, driving spot. Okay, let me just play around with the, the beam because it's not right. 
Okay, so this is the D3 driving spotlight. That is at 20%. Now we go to 100%. 20%, 100%. I cannot wait to see the difference between this and the D4. It's a very, very white light. It's nice. Right, can you see that in the camera? You can, yeah, I can see on the screen. This is the fog, the D3 fog. It is such a wide spread of light. It's literally like going, going around the side. So I think anyone who's got this on their bike, you can see the beam from all angles. So it doesn't go a long way down the road. I'll, I'll try and see how far it will go down the road. But that's at 20%. If I go to 100%, we get that. So I haven't, I haven't got really long distance with that, but it is shining everything up all around me. Okay, and now we're going on for the final one, which is the D7, which I have on both my bikes because it just kicks ass. Right, let's set the angles. Okay, so there's the D7. At 20%, we go to 100%, and we've got that. <laughs> That's just incredible. That is just so bright. So 20%, 100%. If you'd like to see it, what we can do here is show you 10%, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100. So there we go. So 20%, 100%. I don't know if you can see down there, in the middle of the track, there's an animal. I can, there's an animal uh, literally going from right to left. He's just stopped at the left-hand side, right on the horizon. He's just going into where all the, the strawberry um, frames are, and he's gone. Let me show you again. So D7s, 10%, 100%. Let's now unplug the D7s just show you what you get with a BMW bike all by itself. That's all you're getting guys, that's all you're getting. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time, stay safe behind those bars. Not these bars, but these bars. And I'll see you in the next video.